Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We're going to begin at 5 with the weather. A lot of green, as you can see, moving across Michigan through southeast Michigan anyway on exact track 4D radar. Okay, so let's take a live look outside right now. Windsor Skycam. Oh, it's been soggy for our Thursday today, and we are not done with the rain just yet. State police, have in fact, have responded to dozens of crashes since the rain started falling overnight. And we are not out of the woods just yet as we head closer to the weekend. So let's bring in Kim Adams. Help us take us through this timeline. Yeah, there's a lot of water on the roads and we're continuing to get some rain. It's not as heavy as it was for the morning commute, but it's still raining in many communities, including Novi, Northville, down to Canton and Plymouth. Romulus, uh, just outside the airport, getting a brief shower right now, also in Livonia. And then you go over to downtown Detroit. And aside from a couple of sprinkles, it's not really raining here. Up into Harper Woods, a couple sprinkles there, and then over to Oak Park. So as we go throughout the next several hours, we still have more rain that's coming up from the south. So we'll continue to see the scattered showers. We did miss out on a big bulk of the heaviest rain that kind of stayed off to our north and east. But we're still going to get more rain here as we go through the rest of of the evening hours. Temperatures right now range from 48 in Sandusky to 62 out at Metro Airport. A wind advisory is in effect for tomorrow, so our attention focuses from heavy rain today to high winds tomorrow and still the chance for a few more scattered showers. So we'll talk all about tomorrow and the weekend, of course, coming up. As it stands right now, in two weeks' time, the Chicago Bears will be on the clock, 14 days away from the city of Detroit hosting this year's NFL Draft. The three to four hundred thousand people expected to attend getting around downtown. It's going to be a little tricky. It is, and today Mayor Duggan and other officials talked about plans to help make it easy as possible for folks to attend. Victor Williams live downtown for us. A lot of people here. We're talking about Victor. Oh yeah, Devin and Karen, we are talking potentially hundreds of thousands of people right here downtown for this event. But get this: don't expect to just come out here and park your car a few blocks away. It's going to be packed. With nearly everyone in the country looking forward to the NFL draft, downtown Detroit is going to be the premier destination that everyone's heading to in just a few days. This is going to be, I think, similar to those who can remember the fireworks in their heyday, when if you weren't here by very early afternoon, you had no hope of driving into downtown. Mayor Mike Duggan making it clear that parking will be extremely hard to come by when the draft is in town. We'll predict that by noon or one o'clock, uh, everything down here will be full. As a result, several alternatives are in place. The People Mover will be running 24-7 for the duration of the draft. You can also take a park and ride trip downtown via the queue line. The Q Line's offering a terrific deal, $5 park and ride, where you can park up a new center, take a short ride down on the Q Line, which is free, um, and be like right in the heart of the action. On top of that, shuttles will be running all throughout downtown, including from the Wayne State area in Corktown. Smart General Manager Dwight Farrell says using his company, however, is a no-brainer for those who have to come from a decent amount away. There will be people who live in Oakland, Macomb, and Wayne counties, for $2, you can take SMART down here and get here. And people who may be in hotels, who couldn't get a hotel in the downtown area, but are in hotels out there, the same thing for them. All of those options are very, very cheap and affordable for anyone who wants to come down here. So obviously, once again, guys, it's best to plan ahead if you are planning to come down here to enjoy the event. But once again, we can't stress this enough, this place is going to be packed. Victor Williams, local four. So the, are those the only options, Victor, you're hearing? Oh, yeah, actually, there are. Check this out. We know you've seen these scooters all around town. A lot of yeah. folks will be able to utilize this as well as the bicycles, the Mogo app, all of that stuff is available as well. Or you can bring your own skateboard, Victor, just for you. Oh, letting you like <laughs> just reminding you. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> all right, skills. Pal, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. O.J. Simpson, football star and the defendant in what was called the trial of the century, has died. According to his family, he passed away after a struggle with cancer. O.J. Simpson's family announced the news of his death in a statement on social media. On April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. He was one of the greatest ever on the gridiron and inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. 
but his football career would forever be overshadowed. When in 1994, his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman, were found stabbed to death in Los Angeles. He was charged with their deaths, and it led to what was called the trial of the century. And you had networks who broke into programming, and you had everybody in the world focusing on this case. During the trial, one member of Simpson's legal team says they worked to raise doubt in the minds of jurors. There was overwhelming evidence that might suggest that he did it, and then there was one piece of evidence that was tampered with. While the jury found him not guilty, the family of Ron Goldman, one of the victims, did not. In a statement, Ron's father, Fred, tells NBC News, The only thing I have to say is it's just further reminder of Ron being gone all these years. It's no great loss to the world. It's a further reminder of Ron's being gone. O.J. Simpson was 76. And Simpson's death won't end the court battles. The civil judgment to the Goldman family is reportedly still mostly not, mostly not paid. A major milestone has been reached on what is now the second tallest structure in Detroit. The final steel beam has been put into place at the Hudson site, signaling a new phase of the build-out getting underway. Rod Maloney live on this story for us tonight. Uh, Rod, this has been a long time coming. How about, say, 26 years, Devin? I mean, that's a heck of a long time. And we're going to show you the building now. And uh, it's 49 stories tall. During the day today, there was so much cloudiness and fog, you couldn't see the top of the building. Now we can. And you get to see it's 49 stories and realize, wow, what a long, strange trip this has been. Generations grew up with the J.L. Hudson building's massive swath across the skyline. Its history even larger than that. But on October 24th, 1998, they spent $12 million to demolish it. Now, they're spending more than $1.2 billion in 2024 to build the new Hudson's Tower. Dan Gilbert's Bedrock Company gave us this video of Gilbert himself signing the top final beam and the traditional treetopping ceremony, with the last beam getting sent into place by steel-nerved steeplejacks. Detroit Chamber CEO Sandy Barua calls Gilbert's billion-dollar bet on the city significant. You know, all throughout COVID, all throughout that period of time where the Hudson site laid fallow, so many people questioned, was this going to happen? But here it is. Now, originally, Gilbert wanted to eclipse the Wren Senate height, but had to scale it back and now will stand as the city's second tallest building at 685 and a half feet, just five stories shorter than the Wren Sen. So scaling it back a little bit made all the sense in the world, but hey, let's not forget, this is a big you-know-what building. Office space, housing, retail, really good restaurants, all the things Gilbert says he remembers from his childhood and wanted to bring back are now on their way. This is changing the Detroit skyline, and it's a symbol of kind of, you know, just how much we're progressing, how much the city is changing in a positive way. But what it also shows is it shows that investment in Detroit is real. And Barua says never bet against Dan Gilbert when he sets his mind to something. And so we got 49 stories. Also an office block that just expands down the street all the way to the other end here. And uh, it, it is impressive, no doubt about it. And we're glad to be able to see it now. We had drone four up earlier. Couldn't get a better picture, but you get the idea. Back to you. It's really something. And Rod, you and I both remember the day they demolished the Hudson's building. Did you ever think we'd see this day with the hole filled in this way? Devin, I was in the helicopter, okay? The dust came up to where we were, right. and if you recall, when they knocked it down, that section of the people mover was destroyed. They had to shut the people mover down for over a year right. to get that fixed. And at the time, I had, I, there wasn't even a thought in anybody's mind, maybe even Dan Gilbert's, that they'd refill that hole, but <laughs> here we are. Isn't that something? Yeah. All right, Rod, great stuff.